With The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild releasing on Nintendo Switch, Nintendo decided to capitalize on the idea and include a Hyrule Warriors version of that game, being Age of Calamity. This took our characters through an alternate timeline, giving us a look at what could have happened if it played out differently. And it allowed us to actually play as a lot of familiar faces from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which was really cool. It got myself and others online thinking about how it would be like to have a sequel, maybe something related to Tears of the Kingdom. Since we got a sequel to Breath of the Wild, couldn't we get a sequel to Age of Calamity? And a lot of people have already deemed it Hyrule Warriors The Imprisoning War, focusing on the imprisoning war that happened so many years ago with Raru and Song and of course Ganondorf. So I whipped up an idea about how this game would actually play out, talking about the characters, the enemies, the worlds, and just everything in between. So sit back and enjoy this concept of what a brand new Hyrule Warriors and Prisoning War game could actually be like. Hey, a lot of you right now are not yet subscribed. If you enjoy videos like this, please let me know by making sure you leave a like and subscribing. We are super close to 300,000 subscribers, and you guys have been killing it lately. So if you enjoyed today's video, just don't forget to show some love. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Now, of course, the story is pretty straightforward considering the fact that we got a lot of information about it from Tears of the Kingdom. But the question is, does this relate back to Age of Calamity or not? Is this the same timeline or is this another branching timeline in the story? It's hard to say. You could easily just have this continue on from the new story made from Age of Calamity and make this be the direct sequel to that game, or you could just simply make this a whole completely new game that takes place on another timeline entirely based on a new story with brand new characters as well. After all, we know Pura and Robbie were able to rebuild Terrico, so he could be the focus of the story once again, being able to time travel all the way back to the Imprisoning War. And maybe he does so from a corruption from some gloom that comes from underneath the castle, because after all, even though this is a new story and a new timeline, Ganondorf should still be underneath the castle getting ready to awaken in this story as well. The same way there is an evil Terrico in Age of Calamity, maybe some way the gloom in Ganondorf can corrupt this Terrico once again and do something with warping him back to the past or everyone back to the past in order to regain his Gerudo army again. This doesn't just have to be a new timeline with a completely new and different story, it could also maybe help to tell some of the events that actually happened in our canon timeline, showing us what happened during that great imprisoning war, showing Ganondorf's attempts to take over Raru and Sonya's castle and kingdom, and also just showing some of the events of the battles that took place as well with both of their armies. This would allow us to dive deeper into the beginnings of Hyrule, for instance more information on the Zonai and the Sages of Old. It would be a really interesting story to maybe flesh these characters out out and like take their mask off. And of course, with this being an alternate timeline, the ending could be a little different. Maybe Raru never does perish here. Maybe Link is sent back in time to help him or he has other help as well besides the sages of old. Maybe he has the help of the new sages in the future or maybe even the future champions could help him back in the past. But he would never have to imprison himself and Ganondorf. Instead, they could just defeat him where he stands all those years ago. And maybe the story is altered a bit so we also don't have to see the heartbreaking moment of Zelda Zelda's transformation. Now some people might say that Tears of the Kingdom doesn't introduce too many new characters to have a really cool brand new diverse roster and movesets, and that's not true at all, because even the characters that could return could have completely new movesets thanks to Tears of the Kingdom's story beats. So let's first start off with Link, because I don't think there's a possible way that Link's not here unless there's one thing that they do, and I'll get there when I get there. But first off, Link can make a return via the time travel through Terrico's portals or something, but yes, he would have his hand abilities from Tears of the Kingdom. How would Ravru give him this though if Ravru isn't passed away or just isn't in spiritual form? I don't necessarily know, but maybe there's some way that Link actually gets the help of a secret stone or something that gives him the abilities that he has in Tears of the Kingdom. This would give him a lot more options than just a sword. For instance, he could have the ability to build weapons or even structures really quick as part of his moveset. For instance, he can maybe pick things off the ground or after defeating enemies, immediately fuse with their horns or maybe leftover weapons to create his own 
weapons would be a really cool idea to have in a Warriors game, so he could always have a different weapon depending on what he's fusing with. Or maybe he's just straight up able to build things as part of his moveset and use them as a weapon real quick, or any of the other weapons that he has in the game thanks to his hands, such as the reversal of time, which could be pretty cool in battle. I don't think there's a shot that Zelda wouldn't be in this game, because she already traveled to the past and tears the kingdom, so she's definitely going to be there in some capacity. Maybe she can learn more light powers thanks to her technically great 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 grandparents with Raru and Sonya, Sonya being able to control time and Raru being able to use the power of light. And using both of those already, maybe Zelda can learn to harness even more power with those in order to create a new moveset, or maybe a moveset primarily based on time and time manipulation would be really cool. But this could be like when she was finally able to awaken her goddess powers in Age of Calamity. Next up we have the Sages of Old. Now these were technically the original, original champions, so maybe we could finally see them without their mask and learn more about their individual history and maybe learn even more about how they function. Maybe they have actually completely different movesets from those of the champions and the new champions slash new sages in the future. Yes, they technically have the same weapons, but thanks to the secret stones, maybe it imbues them with brand new powers that we've never seen before. After all, we've never actually got to see them fight. I mean, the closest thing to a fight we got to see was them all throw their weapons at Ganondorf for a surprise attack, and that's not really anything to really go off of right there. But hopefully we get to see a full moveset potential for all of these sages and what they could possibly do in battle. Next up we have the new sages, which are pretty much the new champions from Breath of the Wild. They now have the power of the secret stone, which can amplify lots of their abilities, giving them brand new attacks and brand new versions of themselves that we've seen from Breath of the Wild or even Age of Calamity. Yunobo could be stronger and maybe based around his kind of wrestler outfit slash mask that he had, uh, thanks to Ganon and Dwarf kind of corrupting him. Sidon could use more water-based attacks like a water shield or maybe water projectiles that he can shoot out. Riju is a lot older now and can ditch the sand seal for more lightning-based attacks just like Lady Orbosa. And Tulin can now replace his dad, Taba, with lots more wind-based attacks when he's more smaller and very light compared to the other Rito fighters like Rivali and Taba. If they wanted to, they could also bring back the old original champions from Breath of the Wild if they wanted to because technically they're still alive in the Age of Calamity timeline, so yeah, but at the same time then there would be technically three different versions of each person from their each respective clan, which could be a lot, but it could be pretty cool to see them all interact with each other. It'd be like three completely different generations at once, it'd be pretty cool. Next up we have Raru. He will be a heavy hitter, kind of like King Rome when he was able to use his Claymore version. He also has the same power as Link thanks to his secret stone, so he can also have light based attacks, similar to that of Zelda and using like Zona magic with the green swirly magic that he can shoot out of his hand and maybe he can like imprison certain enemies or just like punch and shoot out green or light based attacks he's just like a big heavy hitter but also with some projectiles that can shoot from his hand then we have Sonya, which will be the master of time thanks to her secret stone where she can cause weird things to happen manipulating time in the area maybe an enemy can throw something at her and she can like toss it back or maybe she can just cause a whole bunch of things to happen around the environment to move around things thanks to time manipulation it's weird to kind of think of a whole moveset based on time moving it forward and backwards but I feel like they could do it. Minoru would be the techie type using lots of Zonai technology. This is where you'll get lots of your building mechanics. Lots of just cannons that she could pop up or the little lasers or all types of attacks she can create by pretty much just creating constructs out of everything that she has found down in the depths. Maybe she can use gliders and fling them at people or maybe build like little vehicles and drive them into people or even use her giant mech that she's actually in control of in The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. There is so much that Minoru can do, in fact she would pretty much be Tears of the Kingdom all wrapped up into one character, just the whole building mechanic for her. Now, the reason why I said there could be a chance that Link doesn't appear in this game is if they just want to retell the events of a past war, and the ancient hero aspect armor is actually a reference to what the hero looked like back then. And maybe this is the main sword fighter of the game, where he's just a really talented, strong sword fighter that also happens to be a Zonai. I would love to learn more about this mysterious character and the history behind him or her, um, so I'm very intrigued in what this character could even be. Of course, we know how Warriors games go, we're able to always play as the villains, so maybe there's even story beats where we can play as Ganondorf and some of his army. For instance, playing as Ganondorf himself would be really, really cool. He has a pretty deep moveset, he's very much like Link, but 
has lots of other weapon options as well. He's able to be powered up thanks to the secret stone into like a completely gloom version of himself, but maybe he could also switch between different weapons as part of his moves, using the gloom club, the gloom spear, the gloom sword, and even his demon king bow. He's also able to fire gloom projectiles and make duplicates of himself around the arena. We also know he has some type of demon horse, but he really only used it in one cutscene from the past, so I would like to see that make a return and maybe it's part of his moveset or how he dashes, who knows. A new type of character you could add is the Grudo sisters. During lots of the past cutscenes with Ganondorf and his Grudo army, you can always see two Grudo soldiers that look very much alike to the left and to the right of him. Now a lot of people have said that these are very much Komune and Katake from Ocarina of Time, or maybe some type of ancient ancestor of these ancient witches, which would transform together into Twin Rova. So maybe one has fire powers and one has ice powers and together they can use both as like their massive transformation or their special attack. Um, so it'd be really cool to maybe switch in between both of them or maybe use both of them at the same time in some type of new unique moveset. And of course, if you have some bad guys, you gotta have Master Koga, the craziest of the bad guys. He also has the ability to build things, but he would build lots of silly and stupid things and he'd have a stupid way to fight. Like lots of his contraptions that he builds would just blow up on him or end up getting him hurt in the process, but also defeating his enemies in front of him. He'd just be like his joke character, kind of the way he is in Age of Calamity already, where lots of the Yiga members mess up and knock him over or something, and he just could be a big sloppy mess, but also can get the job done. Now other characters can make a return like Impa or maybe even Terrico once again or the Great Fairies, but you can also finally make Pura or maybe even Robbie a playable character. Or maybe you can swap off of both of them or maybe use them together and use like weird type of technology with their battles, like Guardian tech would be pretty cool. Of course you gotta have some goofy characters, so why not bring King Dwarfin up in here? Yeah, I'm not even kidding. Look, if the Great Fairies can make it because they're huge, so can King Dwarfin. Why not put Sage in this game? Yes, the clothes die person. I, I kid you not, he's a creepy looking guy, but what if he could just like start throwing different colored dyes all over the stage and smoke clouds and like using them as his attacks or maybe just like hitting you with different outfits or clothes or changing his outfits? I don't know, come on. What about Balson? I love Balson. What if he could just like build you a home or like he's like an Animal Crossing character from Smash Brothers, but in Hyrule Warriors where like, you know how Villager and Isabelle's main smash was they put you in a little house and build it and then blow it up. Maybe something along those lines where he like hits you with chucks of wood or, you know, building materials or hammers or saws and stuff like that. Like that would be awesome. Hudson could be part of that too and part of the building group from Terrytown. Who knows? And finally, we could probably get some original characters considering the fact that we got Suga and Aster in Age of Calamity. They could probably come up with some new ones and maybe even just bring them back. Who knows? Something else I would also love is if this game had a mechanic where every single playable character in the game can use a secret stone, giving them a completely new set of skills and abilities that heighten their already set skills and abilities. That would be really cool, and maybe it's a big mechanic of this new Hyrule Warriors game. Yes, Bolson's already the greatest builder in the world, but this would turn him into an absolute building legend. As far as the enemies go, this one isn't too difficult to implement, because you can just have lots of the ones from Breath of the Wild and Age of Calamity. Tears of the Kingdom has lots of the same enemy types. You still have your Moblins, Bacoblins, Lazalfos, you know, the enemies that you're used to. But there are some new ones, and some that can make up for some new army groups. You could have the boss Bacoblin be a new mini-boss to defeat in the overworld. You can have Gibdos and Moth Gibdos be a new army group, maybe in the depths. You can have the Horriblins be a new army group, maybe in the cave networks. You can have little froxes as part of an army in the underground, and you can have Aracudas join the fray as well. Like Likes could also be in there, and so could Corrupted Zonai Constructs. We have them all over the place in Tears of the Kingdom, but maybe the Gloom had really got to them some more, and maybe they're now corrupted and under Ganondorf's control. We know there's various different types of constructs. There's lots of little weak ones that could be part of a larger army, and there's even some bigger, stronger ones that could be mini-bosses. Bosses can make a return for from Tears of the Kingdom, like the giant frocks in the underground. We have Gleox can make a return, which are the giant three-headed dragons, which would be crazy to fight in a Warriors game. I would love to see that boss finisher. There's Flux Constructs, but there's the giant blocks, and maybe there's unique ways to take them down, and other main bosses from Tears of the Kingdom that could be used for sure. Now, honestly, they could just work the same way as Tears of the Kingdom. Maybe there's character-specific things that you can do in order to knock them down quicker. For instance, if you have Yunobo with you, you can just, you know, chuck yourself at one of his legs in order to 
to knock him over. And then with Mukdo Rock, if you use a water attack, you can wash the muck away a lot faster. Lightning would be a quick and easy way to take out Queen Gibdo, but you don't have to since it's a Warriors game and you might be using a different character. The only one I can see being a problem is Cold Gera because you fight it in the air the entire battle. I don't know how this would work in a Warriors game, but maybe it swoops down towards the ground for a lot and it's a different fight entirely. It's hard to say, but I'm sure there's some way they can make it work. We have to take out its weak points where the giant crystals are along its segments of its body. Some other army waves that you'd have to take out would be waves of Gerudo women that are underneath the rule of Ganondorf, which we've seen back in the war back then would be pretty cool. Um, there would also be corrupted, gloomed enemies when you're down in the depths where the same thing happens. If they touch you, you could permanently lose hearts. And there would also be armies of Yiga Foot Clan soldiers all over the depths that you'll have to fight as well. And they could also have their own little contraptions like they ride and they control around their bases. Wow. <laughs> What about locations? Well, if we're going back in time, the entire map could be shaken up and show us what things looked like way back then during the Raru and Sonya era, or technically the Zonai era. We could fight around and inside the Temple of Time while it's on the ground still and not in the air, and many other sacred sites that we now have kind of spread all over Hyrule and in the air uh, that could all just actually be part of what Hyrule used to look like. For instance, we know King Raru had a different style of castle a long time ago, I would love to kind of explore that entire castle and everything around it and see where that location was and what it actually looked like because I believe it actually was on the Great Plateau which is a lot different from where the castle lies now. There's also tons of cave networks and underground passageways which could work really cool and have like different armies of Stalfos enemies and also Horblins down there. We already talked about an army of Gloom enemies but man the depths could have so many locations in this game considering the fact that lots of the locations were actually fully real lie structures and areas down there that are now in ruins by the time of Tears of the Kingdom, but it'd be really cool to see these areas fully flushed out and working the way they used to. Like mines in full capacity would be awesome, and to see all those areas the way they're supposed to look would be amazing and maybe even with a brighter light. Maybe the Gerudo underground cemetery can be more flushed out with armies of Gibdos and Moth Gibdos everywhere, um, and also maybe even an army of Poes. I mean, we still don't have Poes, which is so strange. Technically, there's a little collectible pose you can find in the depths, but I want actual Poe enemies down there. That would be pretty cool. Maybe the Gerudo region is also different and more of a stronghold like it was in Ocarina of Time thanks to its rule of Ganondorf and all the Gerudo women. Maybe it's a lot different from the present day's version where it's more of a nice, unique town. Or perhaps for some reason, some islands shoot up in the sky again, but back then, and you can actually go up there and fight on some of the Skylands. That would be kind of cool as well, and a different take and a different location for sure. Sure. think of too many new game modes for this game, but one I thought of is the building mechanic. What if they gave you different hordes of enemies to fight and a limited amount of builds or pieces in order to build your own contraption for that specific wave, and once you complete it, you move on to the next one. This would be pretty interesting. Now, it would take a lot from Tears of the Kingdom, um, but at the same time, it would be kind of cool to see in a Warriors game. Or maybe there's just like a battle arena where you just pretty much build whatever you want to take out the group of enemies or the wave of armies coming toward you. I'm sure there's there's a lot of things they could do with the building mechanic for side modes and extra game modes, so I'm sure they got it covered. I mean, shoot, they could even have a mode where you play as the actual bosses. I think that would be unique, but I'm sure Nintendo can find something else to throw into this game. The Tears of the Kingdom gave us more than enough new content to easily give us a new Hyrule Warriors game. I would love for it to be a sequel to Age of Calamity or maybe another alternate timeline story. Either way, I think there's tons of content, new characters, and new locations that they could put on this map to have a really cool new Hyrule Warriors Warriors experience. But let me know in the comments down below if I missed anything that you would love to see in a brand new Hyrule Warriors game. Let me know down below and thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe before you head out. And like always, I'll see you all on the next one. See you guys.